Okay, my new lock made it in. This is Monday, but uh, and it came in yesterday. I was hoping to get in sooner so I could make this uh, this video since it's a new lock, a carbon steel lock. Uh, it has to be seasoned, and I've been using locks. Oh my gosh! Let's see. Uh, I was married to a Filipina for 17 years, and then my son, uh, all through 20 years, so 37 years. And I've been to Okinawa and every place else. And uh, so, yeah, you need to actually season any type of iron, uh, like cast iron skillets and uh, carbon steel and stuff. You don't really want to uh, season stainless steel and no stick pans and stuff like that because they don't rust. Well, I guess some I've seen some have. I take that back because I've seen some cheap ones that I bought at like the dollar store and they rusted. And uh, those were supposedly no stick uh, <laughs> and non stick pan. And that was right after I got a divorce and had to get new pots, pans, and everything. Anyway, so when they get through making these things, it's a nice heavy walk. It's round bottom, and so that's why you see the base here. To hold it steady because if it was not there I guess you could balance it <laughs> anyway anybody that's been in the service and been around uh, guns or airplane parts and everything else uh, a lot of thing a lot of times they will ship parts uh, that are coated in a type of oil. You can't see it. You can't feel it. I take it back. You can kind of feel it. My finger did come off a little bit uh, shiny. So the first thing you're going to have to do, I'll tell you what all you're going to need. And uh, I'm, I might season mine different than a lot of other people. And I've come to the conclusion uh, that there is no proper way. I mean, there's just ways of doing it, different ways of doing it. And uh, we all agree on that. And I've heard of using flaxseed oil and uh, uh, sesame oil, peanut oil. And peanut oil is what I'm going to use today. And... Uh, but you don't want to use anything like um, olive oil for this. And I've heard vegetable oil and everything else. And you're going to need um, some soap. And scouring. Scouring pads. Oh, and this wok came with a pretty rough uh, scouring pad there. And you're going to need some material. This is a washcloth. And you can use old clean sock, old clean underwear, <laughs> anything else that uh, you can use to rub the oil on your uh on your wok once you get started seasoning it and uh, i get these like these are like awesome they're like five for a dollar at the dollar store and i'm always using them for something always and you're gonna need on top of that you're gonna need some ginger and some green onions. If you don't have green onion, 
which I almost all the time do not have, but I had extras this time. You can use uh, white onions and everything else when you're seasoning your wok. Uh, you can even use purple onions. I've got some purple onions I can make a salad out of, but I'm not going to use them because they're good. <laughs> all, all, everything's good. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start in and we're going to start washing this wok to clean off all the all the oil that's on there I might even try their sponge see what happens and use some dishwashing detergent Certainly, it's certainly uh, smooth. Let's see what this one does. This is this one. If it doesn't come with a, uh, as you can see, it doesn't come with a scrub brush or a scrub uh, scrubber. Don't worry about it. You can use what you have at your house. And you're also going to want to Still here? I didn't. We're gonna use it on the outside too because yes, it does get uh, it will rust. You know, I've seen people with uh, cast iron skillets and all rusted up and everything. And I asked them, what's up with this rust? Oh man, I went camping. I didn't have any oil. And I said, so what'd you use it for? Oh, we cooked bacon in the morning. Uh-huh. And you didn't have any oil or grease to keep it from rusting. I guess people don't think sometimes, but yeah. that's okay. You can use baking grease, you can use uh, oil on cast iron skillets and stuff if you're out, in the, out camping or whatever. Now the handle there is stainless steel. The handle you see up here is stainless steel, so you don't want to scrub it off. It's not going to help you any if you do that. No, I'll probably get a thousand and one. Comments. Well, you didn't do it my way, or I did it this way. And like I say, it's okay. It's, uh, there's different ways to do it. You even got scientists 
Yeah, I'm not joking. I watched one guy who, uh, who was bound and determined he was going to make his the most non-stick walk in the world, I guess. This is pretty cool to watch. He, uh, He did it and he used uh, certain types of oils and stuff. I don't recommend using WD-40 or anything. No. But he used certain types of oil and everything. And, uh... He just layered them on, which is basically what we're doing. We're going to layer it on. I've seen people take these, uh, and you can take the handles off. The wooden handles. If you want to, you can take the handles off. I've seen them uh, turn them upside down in barbecue grills and just so it'll heat evenly. Now that we've got it nice and clean, I'm going to switch over here, and that didn't take very long. So what we're going to do is we are going to start heating it up, and it may take 30 minutes. What we're going to want is we're going to want the inside of this wok right now and the outside to get very, very hot. And you're going to want your exhaust. There we go. You're going to want your exhaust on. Any air cleaners you have in your house, you're going to want them on. Uh, I would turn on my air conditioner to let fresh air in. But then I wouldn't be able to uh, do that with you guys. Good angle on it, see if we can get We've got the heat going. And we're going to see if this with the uh, stand on it works. I don't know if it's going to get hot enough with the stand on it. I may have to uh, take the stand off, but I don't think so. I see some smoke coming around. Cross your fingers. Because it's going to turn yellow. And then it's going to turn blue. And then we're going to cool it off. So this is not a real fast uh, exercise here. Right now, I'm, it's basically I'm having it dry, even though I dried it. It's actually drying uh, any of the water that was still in it or stuck in it. Now my other walk, yes, I even have seasoned walk utensils, but I don't think I'm going to use them. I think I'm going to use plastic or something fat. These tend to scrub, uh, scrape off your layer. I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see this. This is my other lock. See how shiny that is? But if you can see the little serrations that run around here. 
that tends to retain oil and stuff. There's no oil. I can rub the bottom. I mean, that's... It's like non-stick. But it's a different brand, and I wanted something to try something like this, like the one I had when I was married in my first wife for 17 years. Uh, and these don't work very good in immersion heats, but they work good uh, with uh, gas. And you can use uh, the stand, you can flip it over gas to actually steady your lock. I want to look. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So, I'm thinking because this is Watt is not sitting all the way touching the uh, elements in the stove. So it's not getting as hot as I want it to. I may have to take the stand out and work with it touching the uh, elements. just to get that yellow and then blue uh, blue color. I guess I could turn off that vent for right now. I saw a little bit of smoke, but not much. And I don't want to put any oil in it until I actually see those colors spike up there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to you guys. I'm going to have you sit here and wait. You know, it actually is, but it's so slow. It could take it hours. I don't know if y'all can see that. Right in the bottom. It's starting to turn, but not really. It's like a very slow process. So I'm going to let y'all take a break. And I'm going to bring you back when this starts. Uh, heating up and changing colors, or if I have to actually do it myself without having it on the stand. I mean, the wok will work once it's seasoned. It'll work being on the stand because it's hot in there, but it's just not hot enough. Now, one of the things uh, that was mentioned is that I could flip the stand and which I may actually do right now and see what happens. Uh -huh. But I'm not going to do it with my fingers. Heck no. Hey, guess what? See, I've always had gas stoves, so I've never had to uh, work with a stand. 
And as you can see, it's turning that blue color, yellow around the blue. And you want this all on the inside of your uh, wok. Come on and walk with me all night. No, I'm not going to do that. MJ's uh, the company that sponsors him may come after me and sue me for copyright laws or something. Or Weird Al Yankovic. Who knows? <laughs> I ain't got no money, so I can't afford to be sued. But you can take a walk on the raw side. <laughs> Okay, I know bad jokes. As you can see, it's turning that blue. Just taking forever. But as you can see, it's creeping towards us, that blue is. And so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is let y'all take a break and I'm gonna work with this for a while until I get it all blue on the inside, if I can. I think I can. I can probably stand for that long with some breaks. And uh, and get it all blue on the inside. If this was gas, it would be, uh, see how that's nice and blue on the bottom? We're going to season that as well. If this was gas, it'd be uh, going a lot faster, but it's not. So we're going to let y'all take a break, and I'm going to stand here and work with this, and I'll bring y'all back and show you our progress as it gets going. Sound like a deal? Sounds like a deal to me. So y'all take it easy for a little while. And we're back. If you thought I was joking about the uh, walk turning a pretty blue, now you can see it. It took me about four hours last night because well it's a uh, a glass top stove electric burner uh, water I mean uh, gas if you've got gas you got it made you're talking about doing this in no time you can go to a friend's house who has a gas stove or uh, or buy one of these little small uh, one burner gas things but that the one burner does still uh, it's only got a single uh, I guess you would call it a lip of, uh, of um, fire that comes out but it still works anyway be careful when you do this because that's my glove <laughs> Also, I'm going to recommend sugar. Yes, doesn't mean that brand, but, but any brand. I learned this uh, years ago that if you happen to uh, get burned, um, which I did right here yesterday, and you make a paste of, uh, of sugar and water real quick and put on it, stops the burn instantly. I'm not joking. It really works. So anyway, since it took me so long to, uh, do that yesterday. This thing's coming out to be a three-day uh, ordeal here. <laughs> well, because the walk showed up um, 
like it's 1735 30 um, Sunday and I, I waited all day um, it was supposed to be here by 2 1400 but uh, I guess they got tied up plus it was a Sunday but anyway uh, so so I didn't get started then I'm not complaining it just uh, you know, I thought I'd be kind of quick and I'd have a start on it Sunday So anyway, uh, well, let's go ahead and let's season this. What I've done, is I have cut up some ginger and some uh, green onions. Now, for what I did, which, which was bluing the pan, it's, cause, it's causing an oxidation. Oxidation. Can't talk to those. It caused an oxidation. And uh, that kind of, it's like uh, using, like, kind of like opening up the pores of your skin. Uh, you know, you use a warm washcloth and it opens up the pores of your skin and then you scrub your face or whatever. Um, but it sort of does that, and then you're going to use, uh, the oils, um, which are going to create a polymer coating. They're basically the oils, you're going to get, put them on really, really thin, and they're going to interact like this. And eventually you're going to have a totally non-stick surface to your pan, to your wok. Walk is not a pan, it's different. Um, so it gets to uh, preliminarized. I guess that's how you would say it. I can't say it right. Okay, now the second thing I'm going to show you here. This is regular water or oil but if you look it's got one of these little flip tops that just pops off See? and uh, I've had this quite a while now if you use this and you put olive oil or something like that what ends up happening is uh, Your oil is going to get thick in there and that's no good <laughs> so I found these on Amazon and they're really cool because it snaps so your oil is actually sealed pretty cool huh and it won't get all thick and everything else. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started with this. Except, see, blue on bottom too. We're actually going to heat up the bottom if I can get this to at least stay a little bit. It's really smooth, but it will also rust. So we're going to let this uh, heat up, and we're going to use uh, one of my cheap. washcloths like I said you can get them you can get them for five for a dollar at the dollar store and I'm not sure because we're gonna need some ventilation
Okay, I can probably... Hopefully y'all can hear me. Over that. Now the reason it took so long yesterday is because is because, like I said, I didn't have any, uh, it wasn't gas, so the gas couldn't come up around it. I could only do it little by little all the way around. But you definitely want to do that. It's warm right now, not hot, but it's warm. So, in a couple of seconds, because heat does what? It rises. You know, which is one of the weird things in Arizona, you will see, we have some weird things here. I'm from Arkansas originally. But in Arizona, you have some weird things like, uh, Swamp coolers. You've heard of swamp coolers. I have never heard of them. And what that is, is um, it's basically like a box with filters or big pads in it. Um, and yes, people have uh, monetized the, the pads. They, there's all different kinds of pads. Some claim to be super pads and so forth. And uh, so the box has a pump in it. And what it does is it, uh, it pumps up the water to the top, okay? And then it comes down into the pad and you've got a blower on the other side of the pad and it's blowing into your house. And that's what they call a swamp pool. Now, with all the humidity it causes, your, your, uh, um, if you have any uh, metal, if you have any metal hangers, they'll rust. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, but, and I find this kind of weird, uh, since heat rises, uh, you would think the vents would be in the floor. Now in Arkansas, the vents are in the floor. But you would think since heat rises, it would be something like this being the heat. And if, it's, if they come into the floor, you know, then you've got the, um, the cool air pushing the heat up. You know, and same thing when uh, you got heat coming from the floor and it rises, but here, I've noticed a lot of houses. Sorry about that, I had to turn on my uh, air cleaner. I've noticed a lot of houses have their vents in the top. That made no sense to me whatsoever. And also, with the swamp coolers, if by chance you happen to be, uh, if, it's, if it rains, and that's kind of weird too, I remember when we first moved here and my wife, uh, she started yelling at me one day. And I went and rushed, I thought something, there was an emergency. I rushed into the living room and she's looking out the picture window and it was raining across the street, but not on us. And that's kind of, you know, that's Arizona. And so if you got a, uh, when it rains, you can't use your swamp cooler because the swamp cooler works off of humidity, so you just can't use it. And that's why a lot of people have dual uh, 
heating and air conditioning. That way, if it uh, if it rains, they can turn on their regular air conditioner. You know, and they don't have to worry about that. And I tell you, I had a, <laughs> we rented this house, it had a pool. I don't know if I told you this before or not, but I had a, a police officer that lived next to me. He was a canine officer. And uh, he had a dog named Krieger. And when I first met the dog, I mean, it growled and snarled. And, Saliva was coming out of its mouth. They wanted to eat me. And uh, so anyway, he had gone somewhere. And between my house and his house was lattice panel fence. And uh, it started raining. So I had the sliding glass door wide open to let some air in. Because it was hot. You couldn't use the swamp for it. And so I'm sitting on the couch and I'm, I am might have been watching TV or, or watching the fish or something in the aquarium. Anyway, I look up and here comes Krieger. Full stride coming right at me. And I saw my life pass before my eyes right then. I thought, I'm dead. Because I couldn't move. I couldn't go anywhere. And he ran right in, made a leap up onto the couch and had his arms you know, front legs around me, around my neck, and he was just holding on for dear life and shaking. <laughs> the dog was scared to death of thunder, thunderstorm. And when the officer came home, he went back and Krieger had torn down the lattice panel, and he's like, Krieger, Krieger! And he walked through the lattice panel, he thought something bad was going to happen, and he, and he comes around, and I says, he's in here, and he looks, and Krieger's just sitting there hugging me. It was funny. And after that, you know, I mean, we've been sitting there for a long time watching TV. After that, if I saw him uh, in his car, you know, police dogs have a bark. They'll tell you to leave them alone. And they have another bark, which is like, hey, I want to see you. Come and pet me. You know, it's a higher yelp. And I walked by the police car and the cruiser Krieger had that high yelp everything. <laughs> and if I happened to be in the yard when the officer came home, uh, because he could hit a button from inside the car and it opened up the back door of the car. And uh, if I happened to be out in the front yard doing something and he pulled in, he'd have to hit that button because Krieger would go off until he came over and I petted him. <laughs> we became good friends. That's a true story. That's kind of funny, but it, it's true. Okay. And yes, we are going to oil the outside. peanut oil and this is you're going to see some smoke and I'm putting a, a very light coat but you want to get it all over Okay, now we're going to turn it over. And you're still not going to see much smoke. Not yet anyway. <laughs> oh, you will. And a lot of people use tongs for this.
which you really should for the simple fact that uh, your fingers may slip or something like that. Now if you see that, isn't that pretty? How shiny it is? And that's just barely any uh, any oil. And that's going to start smoking. And it's going to start turning black or dark. And I don't know if y'all can see the smoke. I guess you can. But that first initial washing that we did should be the only time that you actually wash your wok. You shouldn't have to wa wash it again as it will, uh, every time you wash it, it starts taking uh, layers off of the, off of your oil base. Which is not what you want. The object is, is to get the oil to stick and uh, polymerize. Maybe I said that right that time. I don't know. And if you notice, you're seeing less and less smoke. But it's shiny. And I just sort of heated it all around. Now what we're going to do, is we're going to turn this off. And I'm going to take this wok off of the heat totally. And we're going to let it cool. Remind you, like I said, there's a gazillion different ways to season a lot. And you just don't want to put any uh, uh, heavy oil. So to speak, you don't want to put any of those on on your wok, and you don't want to put any WD-40 or anything like that. Uh, just a very thin, thin layer. Some people use grape seed. Uh, um, some people use sesame oil. I decided to use peanut oil. Don't use olive oil because it's so thick. Uh, there's, you don't want to rush this, you don't want to rush seasoning it, and when I say you don't want to rush it, I mean, you know, you've got people who will try to, uh, um, not let the wok cool down in between oils and just keep putting coats on and coats on and coats on. And, uh, you know, cheating, so to say, so to say. And it does not work. And flaxseed oil, a lot of people swear by it and a lot of people don't. Flaxseed oil will turn thicker, faster, but it will also... Um, flake eventually so you don't want or I wouldn't want something to flake you know I mean why why not just use something right the first time I think that peanut oil shipped from Amazon is something like uh, $34, I don't remember exactly, 
and uh, flaxseed oil is actually not made to cook with. It's uh, more of a medicinal oil. So you're not going to get the same thing that you want. You know, it's not going to come out. It may come out thicker and, and blacker and darker and appear to be slicker and it will be, but it, uh, it chips from what I understand. So anyway, I'm going to shut this down for a few minutes because you want the wok totally cold and then you're going to start it over again. And so I'm letting it cool down and you're going to see a difference in the smoke next time. It's going to get thicker. That's why I say you, you want to uh, have your air conditioner on vent and have all the ventilation you can around in your house when you do this. And it's not a fast process. But it's a great process because once it's done, um, it's better than non-stick. I mean, you can slide an egg right off. And proteins tend to stick a little bit because no matter what you do, the lock still has a uh, has pores in it, and heating it, and then slot putting the oil on, uh, what that does is actually kind of fills in the pores, and the more and more and more you do it, the less slicker it gets. I'm going to shut this down for a few minutes and uh, come back to you each time it's cooled down. And you're going to see this walk. It's already turned from a, from a light blue to getting darker and darker and darker and darker. And incidentally, you can buy pre-seasoned walks all over the place. And uh, I don't know how they do it. I would imagine they put them in, a, in an oven and bake them or something. But yeah, you can buy them pre-seasoned. But anyway, I'm going to come back to y'all as soon as this is cool, and I'm going to do it again, and again, and then we'll go in for the final step, which you will see. Get back to y'all in a few minutes. And we're back again. Totally cool. And move it over to the burner. Mm. A little bit of film, but not anything great. Now we're going to heat it up again. Anyway, in a second, or two, or three, or 120, or 240. It will get hot. And if you notice this, I'm only putting it, uh, the oil on the clock, and then I'm rubbing it in. If you put a glob of oil on the bottom, um, you take a chance of there being a, uh, a brown spot or a splotch or something like that. And some people put, you do this using paper towels. Uh, because of the lint, I don't recommend it. But I guess you can if you want. It's up to you. Now, see, I'm still not seeing much smoke at all.
And some people actually uh, do put oil in it and then they roll it around and roll it around and, uh, and then they wipe it out and they'll wait for it to cool. And then they'll put it on the heat again and there's all the smoke pouring up and everything. Granted, my place does not smell good right now because it's got that oil smell. But that only lasts, you know, throughout the day. And, I've, and that's another thing. Be sure you close off your bedroom doors and everything else when you do this so that the oil smell doesn't go back to them. And I've got an air cleaner in my room as well, so, and it's going as we speak, just in case some of the scent gets back there. Now see what it's doing right now when it's heating is any of the oils that are actually loose are going to automatically go down to the bottom. So when I wipe it, uh, that'll take care of that. And I'll put on another coat and it might smoke. Because I hear it making noise, so. Then I had to check my air cleaner in the living room and it is on red. Now you can't see it, but there's a little bit, bit of smoke. Can you see it yet? Yeah. And that's from walls actually draining which you can't even hardly see any going towards the bottom. And if you remember how much oil I had in this when I started, I barely used any. So that's just letting you know how much you should use. Not much. Yeah, you're seeing smoke. We're not going to worry about the bottom now. You just wanted that one. Uh, and the towel's starting to turn brown also. Uh, you wanted that one coat on the bottom. And that's going to keep it from rusting. It's baking on there while we're doing this. That bottom is baking on. Baking on. And if you look in the center, it's starting to turn brown. But when you move it, it's still going to have a blue tint. It's going to look like Someone burned their food. Okay, so we're going to take that off of the heat, just like we did last time. Turn it off. And I'm going to turn y'all off and let y'all relax. Just like I'm going to do until this cools down again. Then I'm going to do it one more time and then we're going to season it with the uh, ginger and onion 
and that one will look for some oil on it. And that's just to get the, uh, you know, any of the burned smoke will leave uh, a residue and you'll taste it in your food. And this way it'll, uh, it'll get rid of that residue. And it will be good to go. So we'll talk to you in a few more minutes. And we're back again. It is a little bit of film, but not bad. But it's a uh, cool down now. So let's fire it up. See, there's nothing hard about this. It just takes, it's time consuming is all it is. Pop open my, let's use a, a clean one area. I'm gonna pop open the oil oil. oil. I sure like that stopper better than the, the uh, whiskey pours. Now, once this gets hot and starts smoking, I'll put this one on. And it's got a different odor already from what it started out as. And it's uh, kind of hard to describe. It's not a bad odor. It's not like uh, the smoke odor. Now, it might, it might be bad once I uh, put this in and wipe it down and it really starts smoking again. Oh yeah. <laughs> but that's how it goes. Like I say, if you've got a, um, a gas stove, which will come around, you know, will come around the whole block. And uh, the whole thing will turn dark with a blue tint like what you see here. That gas just uh, helps it go a lot faster. And you know, with gas, You do have some, I mean, it's, it's good because it's instant on, whereas uh, the electric, you have to wait for it to heat up. Uh, but I know when I bought a house in North Carolina, it had a big old uh, gas tank out back. And I don't know if I told this story or not, but. We had a bunch of people over and it was on Thanksgiving and um, we got everything ready and people brought all, all the sides and everything over and uh, we put the uh, turkey in the oven and started it up and walked away. We were drinking beer and talking and just having your normal uh, Thanksgiving get together and neither me or my wife walked into where the walked into the kitchen and opened up the stove and the turkey was still white. And she reached in there and to touch it and it was still cold. And she called for me and I walked in there and touched it and it was cold. So we tried to, you know, what we did is we relit the uh, stone 
and it went out. It lit, but it went out shortly after. And uh, so we were like, what in the world? And we went out to the uh, to that big, huge tank, and it was on empty. It was totally empty. So we called the uh, gas company, and I think it was a $50 extra fee. They came out and filled it up. But I mean, we had to do it. We had to call uh, the gas company. So that's one limitation. But if you live in a city, you have uh, uh, gas lines going to it. You know, when, when my son was uh, born, we lived in a trailer that had a gas tank. And uh, I noticed after I'd leave for work, I'd have a headache. I'd come home and I'd smell gas. And I asked my wife, she, she had a C-section, so she was off work for a while, and she wasn't smelling anything. And then after a while, I wouldn't smell it. But as soon as I got in fresh air, like going to work, I got a headache. And come to find out, it was leaking gas in there. We called the, uh, the owner who came out and put a, a fabric softener in the swamp cooler and turned it on. <laughs> He was just trying to get by. Okay, I see it smoking, so here we go. And it all around. Just kind of like rubbing it in, but making it, uh, making sure I get all the spots. And you see it turning even dark again, darker, a lot more darker. It's turning dark again. It is. It's turning dark again. As soon as that smoke gets away. But, you know, with everything, you've got limitations. I mean, electric, uh, your power can go out, and then you, it's not like you can call someone and have them come over and pay them to fix your power. If you forgot to pay, you got to pay. You got to pay a reconnection charge and all that stuff. That hadn't happened to me yet. I don't want it to. Knock on wood. And it was fake wood, so I tapped on real wood. Okay, we're done on this one. Pull it off to cool. See, so it looks really shiny and nice. Okay, and we will see y'all back after this cools down. And this next time, I'll be uh, adding some aromatics uh, to get rid of the uh, burned oil smell that'll leach through. But uh, also, it's a known fact that uh, that watts, since they are, uh, you know, a real one, they're carbon steel like this, actually uh, emit um, a type of vitamin that's good for you. So that might be why the Asians lived a long time. Okay, we'll see y'all back in a little bit. Then we'll do the final uh, seasoning. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. See? Nice and cool. It's very, very little. What we're going to do... We're going to turn it on about medium high now. Then we're going to let it heat up. This time I'm going to pour oil into the wok.
It's so curvy, very curvy. And once it heats up really good, I'm going to pour, put the uh, green onions and I'm thinking I may I'm putting the green onions and the uh, ginger I was thinking about doing uh, a little bit of garlic, but I don't want to take the chance yet and let it, because burnt garlic is just nasty. <laughs> Sorry, but it is. It's less than that. Now, using seasoned utensils, a lot of people say, well, if it's a, uh, a good wok, you won't scratch the bottom of it. I've used good woks and I've scratched the bottom. Yeah, yeah, woks are like two hundred and three hundred dollars. Too rich for my blood. But I will put the link. Is this one down in the bottom? Probably not. Uh, no. Usually, if you're going to check uh, to see if your oil is hot enough or something, uh, you can always uh, dip a chopstick in. You know? If you look, see how that oil just runs off of there, and that's what you want. I am just going to. Get it around the edges. That's a little bit far now. Um, I'm gonna get my handy dandy used uh, washcloth. Now, no it's hot because I'm hearing it. Don't worry too much uh, about what this looks like. We're not eating it. You could. I wouldn't. We're trying to get the uh, the cooked on burn on oil smell out. And get it all around.
You know, like Uncle Roger and his rice cooker. I've got a rice cooker too. And I've got my favorite rice cooker also. I even uh, did a review on two of them that I had. Because one that I had for 13 years finally decided I need a new one. Rice cookers are like that, so they'll they'll decide when it's time to get a new one. <laughs> All the oil, if you're watching, is basically dissipated. And it's starting to smell like food in here. It's 1640. Just make sure I don't want any spills and burns. When you cook with a wok, you're usually cooking in very high heat. Or somewhat high heat. When you cook it fast. That's why uh, veggies cooked with a wok are better for you because you're going to use minimum oil. And, uh, And it's no stick, non stick. And guess what? Move that over there. Now, what I'm going to do. If I wanted to, I could put this in a soup pot. Or something. What I just did with that fast cool is I just froze those molecules onto the to the what? Now I'm going to take a clean dry towel and dry this off. This is where it's going. I'm 
turn it back on. Because basically, I just cleaned my lock. And that's a total of how much oil I've used, which is not much. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to I put it on the heat to dry out any uh, excess water that was around it or on it. And there you have it, folks. Keep the burnt oven mitt. That's your perfectly seasoned wok. I like it. Keep your oven mitt and keep your uh, old towel that you use to season your wok with. And uh, you can let let this oil on it that's on there right now cool down. Wipe it out, put it away. But you don't want to wipe it too much. You want to keep a thin, super thin coat of oil like Sonic's now uh, so that it doesn't uh, rust. But I keep the old glove uh, just in case, you know. Uh, I need it for some reason, one reason or another. But that's, uh, that is your perfectly seasoned wok. So who wants to walk with me? <laughs> okay, I know. I'm back and forth joke. But this turned into a uh, three day, well actually two and uh, just a little bit of a day. For two days and a little bit of a day doing this. Uh, if you got a, uh, a gas stove, it'll go a lot faster, trust me. Well, I hope you uh, found this interesting and like, got some information and helped you. Uh, please hit the like and hit the subscribe. And don't forget to smash that bell so you know when I'm posting. I try to post every Monday at least. Sometimes I might be a little late. Like the last time I had a, um, internet problems. But those are taken care of now. I hope they seem to be not going to work. But uh, I think I'm going to have some uh, stir fry pork tonight. Does that sound good? I think it does. And we'll do it in the newly seasoned lot. Where I am. And I'm going to eat it. <laughs> so I hope you found this enjoyable. And uh, got some information off of it. And helped someone. And like I say, please subscribe. And uh, hit the like button. And don't forget to hit that bell. And if you're in a warm place, go swimming. If you're in a cold place, snuggle up and keep warm. Trust me, I still know people that are in cold places, uh, even though it's turning summertime. So, until next time, I love you guys. See you soon. Have a great day.